Hi and welcome to an amazing video. So we have a full year's worth of art supplies I've been saving and storing and we're gonna go through and talk them through and swatch them out and use them a little bit today. Okay, so the first thing we have are these bundles of paper. So I get them off Etsy. I'll link all the shops and everything below, but it's Wabi Sabi supplies, something like that. And it's a Malfi cotton paper, so it's made on the Italian coast. And I've talked about her shop quite a few times on the channel and gotten um, sketchbooks. We've worked in the sketchbooks, but these are some paper packs with some really thick paper. Uh, I can't remember all the details and everything but um, you'll find it on her website so this is the rough paper and you can see that it's more like almost more like a moderate cold press it's not necessarily really rough but uh, it's just beautifully sturdy and yeah the quality is I feel like is pretty unmatched it's really really lovely so um, this is like there's a smaller pack and then there's a larger pack I think it's sort of equates to an A5 and um, maybe an A6 or a yeah something like that so um, I can't really remember the centimeters but uh, yeah so and you can see they have like the gift pack there as well with the little uh, wax seal so everything in the shop is really lovely they also do have watercolor paper uh, it's probably a bit thicker and designed actually for watercolor but I just really love this paper I love uh, you can see here like the watercolor goes onto it really nicely So yeah, needless to say, I'm a big fan of this paper. Uh, and like I said, they do have watercolor packs and pads and everything on there as well. I feel like the watercolor stays quite vibrant and true to color on this as well. So I think it's sort of similar um, to the Saunders Waterford, which is my favorite uh, watercolor paper. It's a little bit harder to get here in the US, uh, but yeah. And then, so I'm just kind of painting a rose here as well. So you can kind of see, you can very nicely glaze the colors, um, soften the colors out and and yeah, I just really, really like it. It's also really good for like mixed media and um, yeah, I've, I'll show you in a minute, but like I've been stitching on it and it holds up to that really well. Uh, I have been, yeah, just using it with different supplies and uh, it's sometimes it's really nice to have kind of these loose leaf uh, papers and I've been kind of pulling them out of the bundle and uh, just using them for different things even just for swatching and things like that and painting kind of uh, like studies and things and yeah I, I'm just always really pleased what I like about it is that it's free that you can either stick it up on your wall or sell it or you can put it back into your sketchbook and you'll see in a minute like some of them are put back into my sketchbook some of it I've like torn up or cut up and stapled in
So you can see here as well, more and more I'm thinking about using collage or like overlaying um, watercolor, like so watercolor designs as collage. So this one here is some Portuguese tiles and actually cutting that out and uh, creating that. So this was just kind of a preliminary thought um, sketch and then also here with some like kintsugi plates and uh, thinking kind of through these things and it's really nice to have you can see like here just things stapled in it's really nice to have papers like this to kind of um, see how those things sort of come together not in a sketchbook if that makes sense like what's it going to look like on um, like as a painting so yeah one of my favorite artists and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do like a top 10 or top 12 favorite artists video and kind of like uh, who inspires me but one of them is Bethany Hartwick Art on Instagram I love her thought process and her creative process and um, she's often like beading on her watercolors and things like that so also Victor Victoria Johnson so yeah I will link them below but um yeah this paper is really really nice quality and thickness to be able to do that okay so the next thing that we have and I'm just kind of going into my box here you can see that I keep um, some of the new uh, watercolors that I've got in there I've got other little boxes around um, but yeah so we're going to go through like all the new watercolors so um, these are for a special palette so some of these I have run out of and I use quite a lot you'll have seen them on the channel some of them are new and they're quite exciting as well so some of them like uh, these 2A Gallo ones I've had in a plein air palette that I really don't use at my desk I really just use it out and about but I've been loving those two colors so I wanted to put them into a palette that I have here in the studio as well so okay so let's start swatching everything you could see like there's the little pink palette this is um, the palette that they've been in so the first one here is um, the A Gallo Zirconium Blue and both of well I'm not sure if both of these this is the copper yeah both of these are granulating the Zirconium Blue is really beautiful in mixes and um, the copper is just kind of a nice version like a soft kind of a little bit muted version of like a um, cobalt turquoise so yeah just a little bit less uh, vibrant which is quite nice like when you're painting yeah and then what did I just do so then I did smolt which you could see I got out of a little shell and this one is Verdita so they're both from Greenleaf and Blueberry and again incredible granulation so they just mix so beautifully uh, this one here is the French Grey Earth which is also in that packet but this is kind of a softer um, like a green green umber or like a green ochre and it's just a really really lovely one here it was in my top five favorites but uh, yeah those are all really really beautiful kind of uh, colors to mix with things and to just get some really nice texture on the paper fairly quickly and quite easily so this one here is Daniel Smith duochrome aqua <laughs> duochrome aqua marine and it's just a beautiful kind of shimmering version of like a you know like a cobalt turquoise kind of thing so these ones here are some new ones that i was trying we've we've never really done these i think on the channel this one here is the isero emerald green and you can see that in my um, little swatch book there i had just uh, squeezed in a little kind of dot made myself a little dot card and I'd been kind of using them from that to see this one here I'm not sure if this one will make it into the palette so that so this is where like when I get some new colors I like to kind of make something and try some out 
So I think before we go into the pinks, we're going to just keep swatching the blues here. So we're going to go into these Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. So this one here is the cobalt. Oh, hang on. Okay, so this one is the cobalt teal blue. And I actually saw these. So I've known about these, you know, since they came out. But I and I have just kind of thought I don't really need them. Now this one's the lavender. But I saw a video Sandy did a few weeks ago. I'll link it below. And it was all about how she uses the watercolor sticks. And I was really interested to see. You can see kind of you get this really nice texture. Then you can kind of pull that out with your brush. You can also draw with them, which we do a little bit later in the video. So I was interested to see who used them in these different kind of ways. And I thought maybe I do need to relook at um, seeing if they can work in a different way. So yeah, that one was the electric blue. Let me see iridescent electric blue and it's so sparkly and beautiful uh, in real life this one is the sodalite genuine and again it's like this really deep moody indigo it's really beautiful uh, and I think I wonder if we do the next one here this is hematite uh, hematite genuine which is one of my favorite uh, Daniel Smith watercolors Okay, so this one is Pimentite, Pimentite, Pimentite Genuine. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, again, another beautiful one. It's sort of has got this slightly violet earth uh, feel to it. So you can see everything drying there and how beautifully everything is. Yeah, so definitely really, really love these. And I have some ideas of some paintings that I want to use the watercolor sticks in so yeah we'll do those in other videos you can see the beautiful like the blue electric blue one there uh yeah okay so let's move on to the pinks you can see i turned the page around there so i'm gonna just tear it in half and then i can like fit them into sketchbooks or something so these four here are from cream of pigments so they're an online shop that sell uh pigments and also ready-made watercolors and all kinds of other art supplies so uh, there's a shop in New York here and there's a shop in um, Europe I think so yeah the first one that we did was incarnate number one and the second one here is the pink color this is like a potter's pink and again a really beautiful kind of granulating one this one here is their violet iron glimmer so it has like a very oh no wait this one isn't this one is through light or um if you see on greenleaf and blueberry shop they're starting to they've started to offer it it's called rosaline so it's the same pigment but just really beautiful you can see here i have it in again in my plein air palette and i use it quite a lot i love it for like sunsets just a dusty kind of pink um, a little bit of pink in the sky or a little bit of pink in um, the clouds or something like that and then this one here is the violet iron glimmer it's a beautiful violet earth and it's got a little tiny bit of glimmer in it um, yeah so I think we might be going into the Michael Harding ones next so I've I've only just recently discovered his watercolors and we will look at the dot cards a little bit later in the video but I always like to try the um, kind of violet earth so this one I think is Moraloni and yeah you can see just a beautiful uh, I mean I've never met a violet earth that I don't love so it's just a beautiful one and the next 
are we going to do okay so we're not we're not going to do the here's the next one yet but the this one here is from a company wallace and seymour they're in the uk and they make these beautiful vintage watercolors they call them um so this one is the chinabressa you can see it used to be like more peach like the one at the top but this but now it's kind of like a powder pink which is you know really beautiful just like a different uh version of kind of a blush color and <clears throat> yeah i love their watercolors but this one here is from isaro uh she makes her own range of watercolors and they're from jackson's and that was the powder pink yeah a really beautiful muted pink this one here is also hers from Isaro and it is the ultramarine pink. So again, it's like a, a sort of a muted version of a cobalt violet. And you'll see how I use this um, in the palette coming up. So this one is the other Michael Harding one. And this is, uh, let me think, warm white, I think. So you can see here like it's a cream color, like an ivory color. But this is so beautiful and like to mix with some of these things. So in my upcoming uh, video, palette video, you'll see that in like the top one here in one of the, uh, these are all mixed with that color. So it was the Moroloni, the ultramarine pink and the powder pink mixed with this warm white. And yeah, it makes so many beautiful mixes. So. This is the Buff Titanium. This is the Isaro one. You can see I have it in that little palette, but I don't have it in an actual, um, like a larger studio palette. So I got another one of those to put, pop in there. And again, you can see it's kind of like a warm gray. Very beautiful again. Uh, yeah, yep. And so let's see. One of my other favorites, you've probably seen this before, swatched on the channel, but this is the her Isaro Rose. I really love this one. It's kind of like a magenta color, but it's quite a vibrant and um, it's got a lot of like richness to the tone. So yeah, I really like it. And so next we're gonna do, I think the three uh, Wallace and Seymour ones. So I, you can see I have this one in that palette. I have um, and then two in that palette so we're gonna first swatch the blue John this is one of my favorites and it's a very very soft subtle kind of lilac gray it's a really beautiful one to mix things with just for a slight um, kind of shadow or like a little bit of a tinge of something it's it's really quite a beautiful one and it doesn't kind of overpower the painting so let's see yep definitely i i didn't use this one i loved this for a while but i didn't use it because um i couldn't get more of it and i was like afraid to um yeah use it but i had put it in this palette so i you know i've been using it and just really loving it so this one is the citadella gray schist and again this is like a sort of a medium tone gray but you can see these granules the kind of grain in it the grit and i really love that in watercolors uh yeah looking for that texture so this one here is the uh, wallace and seymour shimmer iron glimmer this is again like a black or like a brown black with um these like shimmering granules in it so sometimes it'll come a little bit more black sometimes a little bit more brown i've had both and i just really love it either way i really really love it if you wanted a little bit more black you can just mix a little bit of like a black tourmaline or like a granulating black in with it okay so on to one of my favorite things in this haul this is a wooden palette i think it's a walnut from blue star crafts so I saw this when they first came out and I've been umming and ahhing about it and I saw someone's video, I'll link it below if I can, she got a little palette from them but she said don't hesitate if you are looking interested in any of their products, they're so beautiful and they really are, the craftsmanship is really, really lovely. Uh, so yeah, all of these, this is an 80 pan like 80 half pan palette so um 
all these will be going in here and I will be doing a video uh, I'm not sure if it'll be the next video it was gonna be the next video but I'm waiting for a few colors so just whenever they arrive um, yeah we'll do a kind of an, a video about this but I am so excited about having this palette and yeah very very it's really beautiful you can see here like I've had these kind of two palettes so quite often I'll have them both open on the desk and my plan for this palette was kind of to meld them a little bit and see if I can just get the one palette open sometimes when like I'm working on larger pieces now I just don't have the room so I'm hoping that like just with the one palette it'll be quite um sort of this condensed version condensed but enlarged version uh yeah it should be quite nice and I just wanted to try out the mixing area here for you and yeah it's just so lovely it's lovely to mix on it's such a beautiful quality and what I really love here I think I show you is the um it comes with these two little magnets that you can put in so it's not closed see here so I've put them in and what it means is that you can close the um, palette without it closing the whole way so that it can actually dry in there everything can dry um, which I just think is such a nice idea and um, you know there are problems with watercolors getting like palettes getting moldy and things like that because you are using so much water so yeah I thought that was such a nice idea as well so uh, what I did as well is I went stash diving here so I have just kind of got this little box of extras or things maybe that didn't work in a palette that I still wanted to try and reuse and things like that so uh, yeah I went into there I grabbed a few of those out and popped those in and then I've also gone into my uh, kind of tube paints and uh, added some of those as well so yeah again you can see kind of it coming together but then I'm still waiting for something so we'll do a whole video on that but the other thing I got from Blue Star Crafts was this little uh, so they're calling it I think a pen wrap or like a yeah but um, this is really beautiful as well this is very very lightweight so um, you can see here that I just have some of the Caran pastel pencils in here because and a few brushes but I find when I'm out um, I really really love putting these over the top of watercolor or sketching with them and then painting on top of them so I've been really enjoying using pastel pencils in conjunction with um, and you can see here I'm showing you that because of the kind of little rivet thing um, you can't really get a pencil like a long one in the middle there you can kind of get a shorter pencil in if it's been sharpened a few times uh, but what I can also get in there is this uh, folio palette from um, Art Toolkit so this is the Travelers Company one and yeah I can pop that in there and you can see how slim and kind of lightweight this uh, plein air kind of setup is like I can take this on the go and it barely weighs a feather um, but this one here which I did I think last year this was from this is a knitting needle roll and I really love it it's like kind of a whole studio in a you know like a portable studio which I absolutely love but sometimes it's just not practical so I mean I, I have taken this quite a lot of places and sometimes it just gets quite heavy to cart around especially if you don't end up using it that much um, so yeah this little um, setup here I think is going to be really nice to just have kind of to be able to slip into a purse or something like that
Okay, so we have a few more of the uh, watercolour sticks. So the first one is Opera Rose. The second one was the Pyrrole Orange. The third one was Buff Titanium. And this one here is Pearl White. And I'll show you why and how I kind of plan to use that in a minute. So just really, really lovely um, colours. So here I'm just putting down some watercolour, uh, just some of the... Uh, violet iron glimmer I think and some of the pink color and just then kind of having a play like just quickly sketching into them with the uh, watercolor sticks some very dramatic music for just some quick um, swatching but yeah it's important to kind of do things like this where you're just kind of looking at um, you know how will it perform if you know inside wet watercolor how will it um, how will they blend how will they kind of uh, yeah kind of mix with the watercolor that you've put down all that kind of stuff so um, you can see here I've just painted this quick dahlia and I am using the uh, watercolor stick so I used like the buff titanium over to, to do some of the kind of um, petal vein veinage and then I have used the pimentite one to kind of put in the middle what I really love about having that there is that the pearl white one picks up a little bit of that and so the pearl white's going to kind of pick up little other bits of the um, other you know watercolor sticks and kind of take on a little bit of that tone so you get these really kind of beautiful uh, tones and colors throughout the piece so yeah I just was really enjoying this and you'll see that I kind of did it another one as well so um, they're quite fun and yeah quite an interesting kind of concept to add to watercolor this way so let's see this one here is nickel azo yellow and yeah nickel azo as a uh, watercolor I really like the color but it's such a difficult one to manage it just sort of wants to take over the whole uh, piece so yeah I thought maybe in this form uh, might work a little bit better let's see this one here I think is green gold and this one is the rich green gold or let me see the, that one might have been olive green and this one's the rich green gold so this one looks like a little bit of a mix I think of the other two Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at are some pastels and we're going to go from like more, most affordable to most expensive. So, and I love them all. So these ones here are little kind of, I think they call them micro sticks or like half sticks of Rembrandt pastels. So Rembrandt is, it's almost, I feel like it's almost half wax crayon and half um, a pastel. So it's a harder pastel. Uh, you can see here like this is a very soft pastel this is a great American and then I use a Diane Townsend one and you can see like how much kind of softer they are and you can get a lot of coverage out of them uh, also the marks don't stay on the paper but with these ones 
And what I'm kind of showing you here is these are really good to use over the top of a softer pastel. So you can kind of uh, do, you know, block out the picture and kind of keep building the layers. And then these are really good as a, as a last layer. And these ones here as well. So these are the Mungio uh, Gallery pastels. And I had gotten a few of these years ago as when I was I started collecting um, pastels and I really love them I love the color I love the kind of shape and the size uh, but again you can see like these are a harder pastel so when you kind of blend it out some of that um, initial mark is staying so again I got some softer pastels there though those were Mount Vision pastels and um, I put those down kind of in the shapes of the roses first kind of uh, yep and then I've gotten these ones and I'm going back in and adding detail so again these are really nice uh, pastels for detail and I feel like if you uh, you know for example it's often kind of difficult when you are buying supplies art supplies and sometimes you feel like it didn't work out and it could be that you know you either need you just didn't have all the parts of the puzzle yet so like here's another soft one this is a great American and then I'm going to go in with more of an olive green uh, Mungyo one over the top and yeah I really love using them like this you can, you can see like they layer up really really nicely and like hold the um, lines you can get quite a nice thin line as well so we'll get back to what I was saying but this is these are Geralt pastels this is the skin set and I got this one from uh, the Rochester Fine Art Store so I'll link them below I'm not sure if they're just um, sort of available at that store uh, yeah but you can see like a beautiful set there's some violets some ochres uh, like green ochres and and yeah just a really lovely set and again these are a softer still pastel so you can see here that when I am blending it out uh, it's not really leaving like lines like the other ones uh, yeah so just these are uh, such a lovely pastel as well and yeah uh, you'll what but what you will see like so the softer the pastel gets the harder it is to uh, kind of maintain the point so like when I or like maintain kind of the line that you put down so um, and part of that is like the charm and how you're kind of using pastels to be able to blend them like you'll see um, when I finish this rose it's a lot more blended but um, yeah what I was saying before is you know you can adapt to the different way that your supplies perform or you might find that like um, pulling out something that hadn't worked maybe a year ago you might have like a new sketchbook or a new paper that it works on now or maybe a new brush that helps with it or or new colors that mix with it well so um, it's often quite good to sort of go back and revisit an art supply that maybe you weren't as happy with in the beginning and then uh, yeah just see if like uh, down the track if you know things have kind of fallen into place where that can yeah you can use it a bit more easily and readily Okay, so on to the pièce de résistance of pastels. I think these are so beautiful. So uh, these are going to all be these uh, um, Henri Roche pastels, the La Maison pastels from Paris. So there's a few sets and a few, um, you can just buy the pastels kind of open stock. So the this is kind of the neon set and then there's a beautiful like dark kind of purples, kind of jewel tone purples set. Um, 
Yep, and so I'm not going to swatch everything out in this video. Maybe I'll do a whole nother video just uh, for these pastels because, yeah, you can see the video was getting quite long. Um, but we will use them, and so you can kind of see, uh, yeah, see them in action and kind of hopefully see them as compared to some of the other ones on the papers. Okay, so the next set here is the, I think this is their skin tone set. So I'm not necessarily using these for portraits, but I just really love like all these colors, these kind of neutral colors. I really love them. So um, yeah, like in florals, in landscapes, uh, yeah. So, and then you can see these ones here, these were open stock. So what I'm doing here is kind of showing you again. So this one you can barely see, but you could see like the kind of the pastel dust coming off here. And what I'm doing is just creating this kind of light, light dusting of pink on the page to kind of work into. And uh, yep, so I'm just using kind of some of these ochres. And again, I love the... I love the feeling of these uh, pastels. They have a little bit of like a limestone grit feeling to them and kind of like you're drawing with marble. It's really, really beautiful. So, uh, yeah, and you can see that the pastel just comes off on your hands. But the other thing I always like to mention when I'm talking about pastels is uh, it's – the pastel dust can be quite dangerous so it is important to either do this where you have ventilation or do it outside um, a lot of pastel artists do have a really serious kind of ventilation system in their studio okay so the other thing that i did is swatch the skin set out in the um pastel mat the clairefontaine pastel mat and you can see like even on the white the coverage here that it uh it gives on the paper and then you can blend that out really nicely I also put water on just to see how this paper would take it because I often do like to use water with the pastels as well so here's a pastel drawing we did in I don't know in an old video and I was thinking about that this is the art spectrum paper so I do really like this when it just comes kind of like this I don't really love the ground you can buy but um I thought we'd just go through and like do kind of another one of these kind of old Louis sofas uh, yeah with the pastels and kind of just see how they all work and I am combining them here you can see the first one I put down was the Henri Roche one this one is the Geralt one and I'm just kind of looking at uh, you know the coverage how they layer over the top of each other how they blend together and yeah I mean obviously they're all premium pastels it's really beautiful the way they work
Okay, so I just wanted to swatch a couple of them on this uh, pastel matte paper as well. So you can kind of see here, I feel like this paper is a little bit gritty when, you, like, when you're trying to uh, use your finger to um, blend it out. I don't know, you guys let me know, um, do you use like a blending tool or um, yeah, what, but uh, yeah, you can see, I just, I really, really love like, the way that it looks on this paper I love the the um the way the paper kind of soaks it up and you can see like the coverage that you get there so those ones were all the Geralt ones and then up the top here we'll do a couple of the La Maison ones and yeah I really actually loved using this paper you'll see like um in the next clip I I do I think we use a green piece and then I go back to the white one and I'm just kind of swatching out all the pastels and then I actually bought a white pastel mat pad just with filled with the white paper because I feel like I I don't know so here you can see like we're doing a tree but um, I feel like you often get told like with pastels that you have to kind of or it's better to use like a, a toned ground but I just found that I really enjoyed using the white paper so yeah again that's like something that you just kind of work through as you're um, building your kind of art journey things that you enjoy um, doing follow those things like uh, you know yeah anyway so you can see here that I just kept swatching and swatching and I really really love this I would love to do a landscape piece with all these colors and kind of in this kind of a way where it's like impressionist uh, yeah anyway so so very happy with that and the way that all the pastels performed and the next thing here this is a palette for my mum and we'll do a whole nother video probably on this but this is the Meaden enamel one but you can see like they've made this purple version with kind of this pink and purple um, sparkle in it it's so beautiful and they're not always available so they're available at the minute um, I'll link those below and then here are a few um, tins of kind of graphite type pencils and charcoalish things. So um, we'll just go through. The top one here is the uh, Faber Castell graphite aquarelle. I've loved these. I've talked about these ever since uh, I've been doing watercolor. I also love the Technalo, the Carandash Technalo, but. I thought I'd never actually gotten the tin of all these colors. You can see I've pretty much used every started using everything, but um, I usually just get the 2B and the 4B, but I thought it would be nice to have the whole set maybe to do some graphite studies. Yeah, then this set here is from Contia Paris, and this is their kind of um, sketching set. There's like charcoals and different uh, kind of pencils. I really love their products. You can see that I've got this tin that was uh, pastel like colored pencils, but I've just kind of since just using that to house a whole bunch of different things that I take and I really love their, their stuff. And um, this one here is the Faber-Castell. It's the charcoal drawing set. So I have a particular video in mind and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, it looks beautiful as well. I haven't swatched it yet. Um, so the two papers, I did get a Saunders Waterford pad. This is the rough one and I just wanted to try this. I love their paper. Their pads unfortunately don't come in the high white which is my favourite. Um, so you can see here it's a bit more like of an ivory colour which I just thought I'll just try that. And then the other um, one that I got is the Stonehenge Legion. So I've been loving these and just kind of using them almost the same way I used to use the uh oh the Canson pad from watercolor uh from Walmart so yeah I would just grab those and just be using them like swatching them and just doing little things and, and yeah I've been really loving those um Stonehenge pads for that but so I have a couple of dot cards to share with you the first one is the Michael Harding uh dot cards and we'll look at them a little bit more later but I think Firstly, do I show you which one do I show first? Maybe I do show you these first. So, um, yeah, I saw these on Jackson's. I this was kind of when I found the Michael Harding range, 
and I saw the dot cards and I thought I, I love a good dot card but I, I got these and I thought even like just on their own these would be beautiful putting up on the wall above your desk or in your studio just to give color inspiration um, yeah and then this one here are the Schmincke this is like a um, what are they the super granulating dot card so I've been wondering about the super granulating for a while again I've seen everything around and um, there's some pretty good videos on uh, YouTube about like mixing these and things like that it's quite nice though if you like that mix I always love um, just having that as kind of a convenience mix and something where you don't have to kind of do the extra work especially when you don't have much time so I got this dot card to kind of try out some of these and see if you know I am missing any of these colors that I'd really love to work with I'm not going to swatch everything out but I just you could see like I just kind of I'm pulling the color out and just kind of using the paper to have a little look at um, the colors and how they granulate and if there's something I'd be interested in and then I uh, kind of narrow that down and it's actually some of the ones that I wasn't thinking I'd be interested in I was and then some of the ones I thought I would like I wasn't as interested in so um, that's why dot cards are such a good idea uh, but you can see they're always also so fun to uh, just use and yeah. One of the other things that I learned from this dot card and it's also a good idea often I like to like just pre-wet the paint but you will find that some of them really just out of the gate they just come um, you know come awake and alive straight away as soon as you wet them and some of them you really had to work to get that to move which doesn't necessarily bother me like I will just pre-wet it and just kind of you know while I'm preparing the uh, sketch or whatever um, you know that will be fine and activate but I just you know sometimes it is nice to know if you know if it's going to be um, something you have to work a little bit harder for or not and so yeah I yep yeah, I, I I really I, I really really can't recommend enough any dot cards like it's never a waste of money it's always a really really good idea and you can see how much paint I still have left on these dot cards so if I find I'm painting something and I think oh yeah I could use you know a little bit of that I can try these out still in paintings and see uh, yeah if they will work or not Okay, so these are the Michael Harding uh, dot cards and you can see that they don't have an actual dot of paint. They have these kind of little stickers on them with the color on them. So it's so you can kind of get a feeling of what the color there looks like and you can swatch your colors that you have and kind of hold them next to this to kind of compare them. But I also wanted to just kind of see if I could take a little bit of color uh, from 
these little swatches and uh, just use that to kind of try the color see if there's anything uh, you know that I missed or that I'm like you know how it kind of reacts and, and like I love this earth of cypress you can um, yeah and the Indian red there they're really beautiful kind of rich colors uh, but and so I'd already tried it with the lamp black there just to see if the color would move or not uh, yeah then I get it get a piece of this uh, Stonehenge paper and and this is one of the glued pads so you have to kind of put a palette knife or just a regular knife or something in there a pair of scissors or something to kind of get the uh, like go around the edges and unglue that and um, like I said this is kind of how I used to use the uh, Canson paper pads from Walmart I would just do all kinds of swatches and things like that on there so I yeah I just grabbed the the and you can see here that I grab a little bit of paint and it's very faint like it's it's not going to be a saturated uh, swatch because not that much paint is coming off these but I just really do like kind of seeing the um, just seeing the color on the paper here so I just go around and kind of pick from different areas and yeah put the color down So you can see what I mean the colors it's really nice to kind of use a dot card like this both these dot cards were so fun to kind of uh, look at the colors and you could see here like that some of them um, they're brighter or they're a different kind of color when you actually swatch it on watercolor paper so it's always kind of interesting as well to see that but um, I also really love how these dot cards just look with their little bit of paint pulled off as well. So again, you know, using them like this and then uh, put, pinning them up on your wall or something, it's quite nice to have that uh, that kind of color inspiration. I really like to also like using something like this. You see them maybe next to each other, see different colors that you may not have noticed and also looking at your existing paints you can see here like I was uh, putting the Sennelier emerald next to their emerald and kind of seeing um, things but like I tried the the Sleeping Beauty turquoise is very close to their cobalt um, I don't know where the dot cards are but uh, one of one of their ones it's a very similar color and um i really love i think it was the ultramarine hang on let me see if i can find the dot cards so it is the cobalt turquoise light i think that looks like the sleeping beauty turquoise or cobalt turquoise deep and the sorry if you can hear and the pale violet is so beautiful and then I got the warm white because so the interesting thing about Michael Harding is I think or was primarily a, an oil painter and so he's brought a little bit of that into the watercolor world so he's made this warm white and this warm light yellow which I think are pretty 
um, easily and readily mixed in oil paints but they're not necessarily found in watercolors and what I found when I'm out uh, kind of doing these quick um, plein air like sunsets and things is that I'm always looking for those kind of colors the warm white and the warm light yellow and kind of mixing them all the time but when you're there quickly trying to get something down it's really nice to have those uh, readily available so yeah we we swatched the warm white but I think I'm going to get the warm light yellow as well but uh, yeah the other thing that I wanted to talk about to kind of finish off is our sketchbooks so this uh, sketchbook is the get messy one from Kaylee Gray I love her work one of the things I really enjoy and you can see like the beautiful like there's vellum kind of papers there's vellum pockets in here but one of the things and you could see how many pages as well but one of the things I love about her artwork is that she will just do like on a page she doesn't feel like she has to fill the whole page so you can see I was like trying out watercolors and things here but she'll just like put a word maybe and like just a you know a line of bright pink or something or she'll just stitch one thing and have one little quote or something like that and I really love the simplicity of those pages so uh, yeah but anyway that's a beautiful sketchbook and then the other sketchbook that I got this is kind of like an heirloom sketchbook so absolutely beautiful when we went to the uh, Beatrix Potter exhibit we got some smaller versions of these notebooks but not with the Amalfi cotton paper in them so on the manufacturers manufacturers website they had these uh, beautiful marbled leather journals with this Amalfi cotton paper in them and this is their largest one I think it's um, 12 by 10 or something like that it's a it's quite a large uh, uh, sketchbook it's got the same sort of paper that I just showed you there in that other thing I think which is a paper I really enjoy working on and it will take so many different meetings but again you can see how many pages are in um, that sketchbook so we'll probably do a whole another video just about that sketchbook and I really really love it it's it's really beautiful so um the and you can get them in so many sizes smaller ones up to larger ones as well so the I keep saying it's the last thing but <laughs> this is so we we're going to swatch them in here you can see some of the uh, super granulating colors there but these are some Lascaux gouaches so I saw these on a Jackson's video I think and I was really curious about these so when I'm out and about painting one of the things I've figured out with oil paints is you know it takes a long time to dry uh, it's it's not something you can necessarily do in your sketchbooks like that and I was looking for I don't really I'm not sure I have had a hard time kind of figuring out acrylics so like with the smell and things like that so I wanted to try these um, and I'm thinking you know possibly I can use these a bit like oil paints kind of out and about as as far as like I'm using them in a different way than watercolor I'm not trying to uh, preserve the light but I'm I can build on these and kind of build that light back into a painting so more like oil painting so and hopefully get some really nice like textures and textural marks and things so yeah the first things I always do you can see is uh, mix them with each other like what's next to each other and then mix them with the neutrals as well so that's what I've just done there but so far I'm loving these and again we'll do a whole nother video and kind of I'll show you how I'm thinking to put together a stay wet palette and we'll see if it works or not um, yeah and we'll just do some painting outside with these and yeah let's see I hope that's 
all been coherent I feel like I keep cutting myself off or like the video trails off and I haven't finished my work my thought yet but um, yeah so this is something that's not necessarily art related but I've been using it for art storage so this is an Italian family who creates this incredible washable paper like so they make a lot of products and like bread baskets and bags and all these kinds of things these are bags that you can use as like for storage and I have been loving uh, kind of getting everything together a little bit and being able to put things in these kind of baskets and have them uh, kind of where I can reach things easily I can put things away easily so they're not kind of stacked on top of each other and you know you're always having a hard time kind of grabbing things it's been really really enjoyable to kind of use those so again I'll link those below and then I think we're just wrapping up the video here so I'm just showing you some wool that my sister got for a uh, cardigan she's knitting um, possibly for Rhinebeck we'll see but uh, this is uh, like a, a swatch panel that she did this is like an intaja lace weight cardigan so it's pretty uh advanced then then there's beadwork on it as well so so yeah i think we're going to wrap the video up with a oh you'll also see some of those paper bags used as knitting project bags as well so they're really versatile uh for lots of things and then we'll wrap it up with a little birthday party you can see here the project bag so We'll wrap it up with a little birthday party for um, Millie. So she turned one a few weeks ago and her and Rosie had this little party. Um, she wasn't exactly sure why the cat was invited, but um, every day now when they have their treats, they want to put on the birthday hats and have the you know, cake stand <laughs> to get their treats off and things. They really love it. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm sorry that it's been late and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.